Greetings, everyone. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. Lots to cover in this episode. We're going to get the primer on the eagle, as well as show you what happens when things don't go exactly to plan and how to fix that. Plus, I've got a big problem I'm going to need your help with. But for the moment, let's get back to the primer, how we get started on that. I've been going round and round about whether or not to take the old bright work off. I was kind of hoping initially to keep it on there, make a little less work for myself, get the primer and paint on there as well as redo the bright work right there on the spot. But the more I looked at problems like this, the more I realized it's probably going to be a much better result if I take the bright work off. That way I can do a much better job on the primer and paint. It also offers me the advantage of being able to work on the bright work inside during the winter. So the first thing I need to do is get the bungs and plugs out of there. That way I can get to the screws and start taking these up. Which isn't always going to be easy. Some of this teak is in pretty rough shape and some of it's awfully thin, especially around this eyebrow that goes along the top of the cabin. There's a few pieces I'm not sure I'm going to be able to salvage, but I'll have to take a look at that once I get it off of there. I've shown you this special chisel I made before. It's got kind of an angled tip on the end of it. it. allows me to tap into the center of a bung and starts to pry it away. also allows me then to get underneath the pieces and pry them out without doing a whole lot of damage, if any, to the surrounding teak. Just a few light taps, a little light pry, and they usually pop out of there pretty easily. I don't start off right at the very edge. I usually start a third or even a halfway down into the bung, rather than the corner around the edge. And just slowly take out one little piece at a time until I can get underneath there and pry the rest out. And voila. Whenever possible, I like to use an old bitten brace to try and get the screws out. They seem to come out a lot more smoothly. It allows me to put a lot of force into a very small area in case they get really stuck. Now once in a while if there's some glue or something stuck in the slot, it'll need a little bit of coaxing to get it in there just right. But I have a lot less chance of stripping out the screw if I use this old bitten brace. Now unfortunately there are a few places where the framing for the tent that I have around it prevents me from using that so I gotta do it the old way. Which as you can see bobbles around the screwdriver quite a bit. Interestingly once I got all the bright work off I can see some of the original green gel coat. All of the Harrisoff Eagles seem to have been molded in this green gel coat. Getting the decorative quarter boards and the board mounted across the stern was no easy task. They put some sort of adhesive on here and whatever it was, it worked really well. Once I took off the quarter boards, it exposed these screws which held the mechanism in place for the steering. Now once those quarter boards go back up, it's going to be impossible to get to those and, and frankly, I don't think the design's really solid, especially on a hull this old. Here you can see the blocks and the bolts that hold them on there. Those screw heads that you saw a second ago were what's on the other side of that. I want to make this a lot more sturdy so I've got a little better idea for it. And plus I need to clean these up and get them working again so while I've got everything apart like this I'm going to take these out. A lot of the bronze screws were pretty old and brittle so some of them outright broke. But I was able to get everything out. At some point this winter, I'll make sure I take it all apart, get it all cleaned up, and ready to go. Additionally, I was able to get all the bright work off. Just laid it out here to start cataloging it. Some of it's in good shape and can be salvaged, no problem. Others of it's going to be a challenge. These decorative pieces are kind of thin and in rough shape, so I'm going to have to take some extra care to clean those up. At this point, she's pretty much got everything stripped off of her. Not a very pretty sight, but that always tends to be the way that it is. These things always tend to look worse before they look better. But she's ready for some sanding and a few other things. 
First off, I apologize about the camera being out of focus. The camera I use for a lot of this stuff is about on its last leg, so that's going to be replaced soon. But after sanding off the old paint and roughing up the old gel coat, she's ready for the next step. Now, as I took the paint off and some of the gel coat, I could see that there were some spider cracks in there, especially around the bow. So I went ahead and routed those out, cleaned the surface with some Total Boat Surface Prep, and filled them in with fairing compound. Now, there is an issue with the chain plate for the bob stay. I'm going to move that up the bow a little bit further, but I'll get into that in more detail in another video. Now it's time to start drilling out the holes where any fittings on the cabin or the deck were located, opening up the holes to start filling them with epoxy so that when I put the new bolts through, it'll seal the core up really well and prevent any water damage. I try not to go overboard with drilling the hole size, usually maybe just 25% bigger than it was before. And then I go back with a countersink and open up the top a little bit to make a little bit of a trumpet shape for the whole thing. Helps it seal up a little more, keeps it from being able to move, makes it a little bit stronger, gives the fairing compound or the epoxy a little bit more surface area to stick to. And for larger areas where I don't have a countersink that works, I just use that small little belt sander I picked up from Harbor Freight to open it up a little bit more. I'll be using some Total Boat Fairing Compound. It's one of my favorite products they make. Done a lot of videos about that. But first I want to come up with something that's going to help save me some time. I've got an awful lot of cracks like this that I've had to route out on the hull. It's kind of an odd shape and it's kind of hard to get a putty knife in there to get everything exactly the way you want it. So I came up with an idea to try to make a profile scraper. I got one of these profile gauges from Harbor Freight, put it up against the tow rail, and then just trace that shape out on a little piece of scrap PVC. You could use just about anything for this. I'm sure wood would work just fine. This is just what I happen to have left. Put it on the bandsaw to cut that out. Then clean it up a little bit with some sandpaper or whatever to get it to match as close as possible. I can use this then to just scrape across and help mold the fairing compound into the general shape of the tow rail or whatever part I'm trying to match it to. It's still going to require sanding and such, but it's going to allow me to use a lot less fairing compound and match the shape a little bit better right off the bat. After the surface has been sanded again, thoroughly cleaned up with some Total Boat surface prep, I'll add the fairing compound with a putty knife and then bring in my profile scraper to smooth it out. Now it's time to start epoxy sealing the holes. I just place some tape over the bottom. I use a special kind of tape called gaffer's tape. It seems to work the best, but it's not the easiest stuff to come by. It's used in filmmaking and for cinematography, so you're not going to be able to get it at the big box stores. And I'm going to use Total Boat Silica Thickener with their 5 to 1 epoxy. Now as with anything, make sure you read all the data sheets on their website on this stuff. The silica especially is extremely fine and light. And you really don't want that stuff in your lungs. So be sure to read the data sheet and absolutely wear at the very least a dust mask with mixing that stuff up. Once I get it to the consistency I want, I'm going to add it to an old Ziploc bag. Essentially turn it into a pastry pipe. And then I just start applying it into each hole. I'll fill it up to the top and then just a tiny little bit higher. Let it rest for a little bit and settle in. And sometimes you can help burp out any bubbles by just tapping on the deck beside the hole with a screwdriver. And then going back and topping off any holes as it starts to settle in to at least get it flush with the deck, maybe a little higher, which will be sanded off later. Now all of these surfaces still need to be sanded down and prepped. I'll start off using some coarse sandpaper with a random orbital sander to smooth it all out and then use something like a, maybe a 120 grit on it and then thoroughly clean the surfaces with some Total Boat surface prep. Now that being said, I could go into more detail about that, which I was planning to do. However, as I was preparing this episode and getting it edited 
Andy over at Boltworks Today did an absolutely fantastic video on everything you're going to need to know on how to prep that hull and the deck and everything else you're going to need for paint and primer. So I'm going to highly recommend you go check out his video. And he's who I go to to learn how to do this myself. So for this, I'm going to use my old reliable topside primer from Total Boat. It's a great product. I've used it several times before and it works fantastic. Be sure to check out all the data sheets on their website for prep and safety. And after giving the boat a good spray down with the power washer, it was time to put the top side primer on. Now, despite the shaking and mixing I usually get pretty well from UPS while it's on its way here, this is a product that's going to need a little extra stirring. It's got a lot of heavy solids in it and it will settle to the bottom. Right off the bat, you can see that the solvents at the top and the solids mix to the bottom like putty. So you're going to need to mix that up thoroughly. I just use one of those mixers you attach to your drill, taking it slow. Give it a few minutes till it's completely homogenous and there's no solids sitting on the bottom and you're ready to go. Now I've been using foam rollers on this, but I think I'm going to be taking Andy's advice and move over to something like he uses. Because while these foam rollers do a decent job, they do start to disintegrate after a while. But even so, this Total Boat Primer rolls on really, really easily. You want to keep it relatively thin. If you do have to put on a second coat, it's better to have multiple thin coats than one thick coat. But if properly applied, one coat of this should do the trick. So after doing a complete application on the deck and the hull, I let it cure for a little bit and then go over it to see how it looked. And interestingly enough, despite my best efforts, I found a few flaws. There's one thing these primer applications will do and it will immediately show every little flaw or mistake or oversight you made. And it turns out there were some more of these little pinholes both in the hull and in the deck. I think they're just manufacturing flaws in the gel coat. They must have always been there, but I didn't see them. The good news is, is it's actually a pretty easy fix. The folks at Total Boat told me exactly what to do. All I needed to do was mix up another little batch of fairing compound and work it into these areas, sand it down, and it's ready to go for paint. No need to even go over it with another coat of primer. Now here's something I need some help with. When I did some initial evaluation videos of the Eagle, I mentioned the top of the centerboard trunk was cut open, and I couldn't figure out why you'd want to do that. Well, now I know. That centerboard is jammed in there extremely tight. It is not budging. Its life in salt water created a condition called scaling, where one layer rusts off and then another and another until it completely delaminates and pushes up against the side. This is a look down into it. That's the pin there that holds the centerboard up. Looking down into it with an endoscope, you can see the centerboard there and there's the shackle that holds it up. But everything off to the sides is rust. It's rust that's come off from the centerboard itself and pushed its way out up against the sides of the centerboard trunk. Now I have tried everything I can think of, including some rust dissolvers, which didn't really seem to work, anything from vinegar to some commercial products. I've even put a crowbar on there and hit it with a sledgehammer and it does not move, and I kid you not, not even a single millimeter. It is jammed in there tight. So if anybody has any ideas of how I can get that out of there without doing too much damage, if any, to the centerboard trunk, by all means, let me know down in the show notes. I'm at a loss. I've got a lot more that I'm going to cover in some upcoming videos, some really exciting stuff, including another video I'm going to put out on the story and what I know of the uh, Fenwick Williams cat boat that I'm working to restore this spring. I'm also going to do a video that covers the Tabernacle Mast, one which I have on my cat boat, and I'll be putting one as well on the Harrisoff Eagle. I've had a lot of people ask me about that, so I'm going to do a video on that as well. I've also got one on the do-it-yourself chart plotter that I was talking about a while back. I finally got around to that project and I'll be putting out a video on that as well, plus a whole lot of other things. I hope you're all doing well out there. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, and a very, very Happy New Year.